Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this community meeting update on the North Trunk Sewer Replacement Project located in the Chenate and Mendocino area of Santa Rosa. My name is Eric Rauber, Supervising Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works Department, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Before we begin the presentation, I will ask our Zoom host, Lauren Wiley, with the City of Santa Rosa, to explain how the meeting will work. Thank you, Eric. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. <clears throat> if you are calling in from a telephone and choose to speak during the public question and answer portion of today's meeting, for privacy concerns, our co-host, Mary Lou Nichols, will be renaming your viewable phone numbers to resident with the last four digits of your phone number. Please know the city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. As Zoom host, I will be lowering all raised hands until the question and answer portion of the meeting is open. At the end of the presentation, Eric will open up the meeting for public questions and comments. Once he has called for public questions or comments, Mary Lou will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to ask a question or comment related to this presentation. If you are calling in to listen to the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The co-host will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hands raised. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, Mary Lou will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond to your question. Thank you, Lauren. Tonight, after introducing our presenters, we will provide a brief overview of the project, summarize upcoming construction activities, including what to expect during construction, and conclude with your questions and comments. Next slide, please. At this time, I would like to introduce tonight's presenters. From the City of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works Department, we have the City's Project Manager, Greg Dwyer. Tom Gorman, our Construction Manager with Kennedy Drinks, will provide a general description of the construction portion of the project. You have already met Lauren, who will host tonight's meeting, along with Mary Lou Nichols, who will be our co-host. We will coordinate the questions and answer portion of our meeting. We will start tonight's meeting with an overview of the project, then focus on the project's next step, following by questions and answers. I will now turn the presentation over to Greg Dwyer. Thank you, Eric. I'm Greg Dwyer, the city project manager for the North Trunk Sewer Replacement Project. We're very excited to bring you this important construction update and to hear from you. Construction updates are posted on our project website, shenatesewerproject.com, where you can also sign up for email alerts to keep up with the latest information. Stream bank erosion along Pollen Creek has exposed parts of the sewer line over time. The majority of the area of the city's sewer collection system is over 50 years old and was constructed from materials that are no longer in standard use. Due to the age and location of the North Trunk sewer alignment, inspection and maintenance of the trunk main is challenging and costly. This project will relocate the sewer alignment away from Pollen Creek to the road right of way. New water mains in Chenate Road and Lamitas Avenue will loop existing systems together, improving performance and reducing maintenance costs. Next slide, please. Our contractor, Team Gelati, has been potholing to accurately determine the location of underground utilities in preparation for upcoming construction work. The green highlighted areas on the screen show the locations where sewer replacement work will take place. The blue areas represent water main replacement work. Okay. 
bear with me, okay. Lamitas Lane and portions of Lamitas Avenue and Sinead Road will receive new sewer and water mains. Next slide, please. You may, you may recall call from our initial public outreach meeting that the project will be built in stages with both traditional open trench and trenchless construction technology. For those of you that missed the meeting or would like to watch it again, I encourage you to visit the project website, sinaitsewerproject.com and select the link. The next phase of the project will involve open trench construction similar to what you may have seen throughout the city. The level and duration of noise and dust will increase during this phase. Trenching will be covered with steel plates at the end of each workday. You will still be permitted access to your residences, but please drive carefully through the, constructs, through the construction zone for the overall safety and protection of the workers. At this point, I would like to hand it over to our construction manager, Tom Gorman with Kennedy Jenks, who will review the upcoming plan construction phasing. Many thanks, Greg. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Gorman. I'm the construction manager on the project. Uh, here's a brief snapshot on where we are with construction at this time. Next slide, please. The pre-construction phase is almost complete. Uh, the work items performed to date include locating and identifying existing utilities along the proposed water and sewer alignments, performing a survey and staking for the layout of the new sewer and water utilities along the alignments, and potholing to establish and confirm the location of the existing utilities in order to identify any potential conflicts along the new alignment that need to be addressed prior to the upcoming open trench excavation and underground boring and drilling operations. Next slide, please. Some conditions to take into consideration as we move into the next phase of construction. Parking in the construction areas will be temporarily affected. No parking signs will be installed and posted in advance within the immediate footprint of the pending work areas. Garbage pickup and mail delivery will not be impacted. The contractor will make arrangements with the noted services to enable them to perform their work on, a, on their regular schedules. There will be noise during construction hours, which are ordinary from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then depending on the specific work items, some work may occur outside of these hours and on Saturdays. Again, regular updates will be provided to the community for work outside of regular work hours and work days. Continue to check the project website or the email broadcast for specific updates. There will be planned nighttime work at the intersection of Mendocino and Sinead from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And we have some slides coming up showing this in the proposed sequence of work. This particular operation will include traffic detours for eastbound and westbound Sinead. Looking a little further ahead into the schedule, there will be planned nighttime work also happening on Mendocino Avenue during the September and October timeframe. Next slide, please. Over the next several slides, I'll be highlighting the sequencing, timelines, and anticipated durations of the work areas planned for the next couple of months per the current draft schedule. This information has been shared based on what we know at this time. As with many projects, a particularly complicated construction project in active city streets, the proposed schedule is subject to change based upon several factors. There could be impacts due to uh, unknown or unforeseen subsurface conditions as we get into trenching, adverse weather conditions, we're still in the, uh, the wet weather period, uh, third party permitting requirements such as Cal OSHA for the safety of the, the trenches and the boring operations, and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife for the work that's inside of Pollen Creek. Uh, unforeseen events such as natural environmental issues. Uh, there's always potential disruption as well for the material supply chain due to the current COVID-19. And then uh, events uh, happen quicker than anticipated, which is a good thing, but they are completed ahead of time and ahead of schedule, which of course also impacts the schedule. So we have to work through those um, and keep, continue 
to update and upgrade the schedule line. As noted earlier, there will be frequent updates provided to the community by the outreach coordinators related to schedule and other notifications relevant to the project. Please continue to check the project site website and email broadcasts for the latest information. With that in mind, we're now looking to what to expect over the next several months. For participants with access to a screen, for cross-reference, the red rectangular boxes highlighted in the proposed work zones being discussed in each specific slide are highlighted on the graphics. On Lamitas Avenue and Lamitas Lane, construction for the new water main and water services is anticipated to commence from February 22nd through March 17th. Local single traffic control measures will be in place. This work will result in temporary interruptions to the water service. Advance notices will be posted at residences affected by the outages. Depending on the complexity of the mainline tie-ins and crossovers, the water may be out of service for four hours on the mainline work and approximately for an hour each or so on the individual meter service switchovers. Next slide, please. On Upper Chenate between Belvedere and Terra Linda, construction for the new water main is anticipated to commence from March 18th through March 23rd. Again, local traffic, Linda Lane traffic controls will measure, will be in place for this work front and advance notices will be posted at the residences affected by the water service outages. Next slide, please. On Mendocino Avenue at the intersection of Sinead, nighttime work is anticipated to commence for the temporary sewer tie-in between the evening of Tuesday, March 16th through the evening of Thursday, March 18th from 10 p.m. through 6 a.m. This particular work operation will require temporary lane change for northbound Mendocino traffic and a road closure at Sinead, implementing a detour of east and westbound through traffic along Sinead Traffic will be directed along Lewis and Lomitas Avenue. Night work is also anticipated to be formed during this period within the business center driveway located between 2604 and 2632 Mendocino Avenue. That's the bakery and the bail bonds businesses. Details and notifications will be provided close to the time of this actual work date. Next slide, please. Following the nighttime work, excavations for the ramming pits and pipe ramming operation, also known as the trenches technology, will be implemented on Sinead at the Pauling Creek crossing. Work is anticipated to commence from March 19th through April 8th. This particular portion of the operation will introduce new traffic control measures requiring temporary lane changes to the westbound left, right, and through traffic patterns at Mendocino Avenue. The individual lanes will be narrowed down to a single westbound lane, allowing for turns and through traffic to establish and realign the eastbound lane and to accommodate the construction work footprint. This configuration will also limit the ability to make left turns into and out of Pete's Coffee driveway, as well as the adjacent school driveway. On the south side of the section, this configuration will limit the ability to make left turns into and out of the credit union and pool supply commercial driveway. Please make alternate arrangements if you need to access the businesses at these locations, anticipate longer lines and travel times, and if at all possible, use alternate routes or staggered your journey times. Next slide, please. On Plum Drive and Lamitas Avenue, construction for the new sewer installation is anticipated to commence from March 24th through March 29th on Plum Drive, and from March 30th through April 27th on Lamitas Avenue. Again, local single lane traffic control measures will be in place in these work fronts. Next slide, please. The conclusion of the trenchless technology work at Pauling Creek will result in the start of the installation of the new sewer main on Sinead from Mendocino Avenue to Lamitas Avenue, Lamitas Lane. Construction for this segment is anticipated to commence from April 9th through April 19th. Again, if at all possible, please use alternate routes or stagger your journey times. 
As for the remaining segments of the alignment, the private driveways on Lamita, the work on Sinead from Lamita Avenue up through Terra Linda, these areas and timelines will be covered in our subsequent presentations as the production schedule evolves and the dates become more evident. The closer we are to the actual time of the event, the more accurate we will be to establish and predict future dates. Next slide, please. To summarize some of the initial talking points, the project will be completed in the stages to minimize disruptions throughout the duration of the work. Travel lanes will be stored outside of working hours wherever possible. This will be assessed on a continual basis throughout the duration of the construction. Pedestrians and bicyclists will be accommodated throughout the project while maintaining, maintaining both the safety of the, of the bicyclists and pedestrians and the safety of the work crews. Signage and in many instances flaggers will guide traffic through the work area. Advance warnings will be posted. Please adhere to any and all instructions provided to traverse through the work zone safely as conditions and situations can and do change on a regular basis. Contingencies for emergencies have been considered. As with most construction projects, emergency and first responders will be provided with priority access and will be kept appraised of traffic related impacts. As we move closer to the dry weather months, special coordination and attention will be paid to emergency services with respect to evacuation routes. This concludes the construction update for now. Many thanks in advance for your patience and consideration during the next several months as we make further progress on the project. Thank you, Tom. Presentation back to Eric to continue to meet an agenda. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, quick reminder regarding schedule. As Tom mentioned, there are many factors that can impact the project schedule, including inclement weather and unanticipated subsurface conditions. The dates presented are currently our best estimate. And we will continue to provide schedule updates through future meetings, the project website, and our weekly uh, email updates. At this time, we'd like to hear public input. So next, we will move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. However, before we begin, joining our presenters, Greg and Tom, to field your questions and comments, I would like to introduce Sean Durenberger with Team Gelati, the project general contractor, and Mike Van Mitty, traffic engineer with the city of Santa Rosa. I will now ask our host, Lauren, to review how the public can participate by asking live questions and comments. Thank you, Eric. Once the facilitator has called for public questions or comments, our co-host Mary Lou will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The co-host will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. The co-host will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your question. Mary Lou, are you ready for the first question? First meeting attendee to ask their question or provide comment? Yes, we are. Thank you, Eric. Anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand in Zoom. If you're calling in, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Okay, I see our first person with a raised hand is Sonia Taylor. Sonia, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question. My name is Sonia Taylor and it's a giant surprise that I'm the first uh, person to ask a question. My question, th first of all, thank you for doing this. Uh, it's very helpful to have some idea when we are all gonna be disrupted by the uh, project. And the second, my question is, will the presentation that you just showed be available on the website soon so that we um, don't have to refer to the notes that I took that I can't read. Thank you, Sonia. 
Yes, the, uh, the, a, a copy of the presentation will be posted on the website, I think within the next week. That's correct, Eric. Fantastic. It will be available next week. Do we have any other questions at this time? I'm seeing a hand raised from Lynn Brown. Lynn, whoops, one moment. Lynn, I must promote you to panelist while you're asking your question because you have an older version of Zoom. So when I promote you, it'll look like you may have been disconnected from the meeting, but within a few seconds, the connection will resume and you will become a panelist and you may offer your comment at that time. My name is Lynn Brown, and my question is that we have had little tiny flags put in our in our front yard, and I'm when with by the people who have been working in the street. I'm wondering if it's possible to tell me what those might be for. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Greg, could you uh, answer Lynn's question? Sure. Um, I don't believe those are involved with our project at all. Um, I would, I think, uh, unless Tom Gorman, do you have any uh, idea what she may be talking about? Of course, we would need to know where they were, um, but we haven't put any flags in anybody's lawns. Yeah, Lynn, if, if, you're, if you don't wanna um, divulge your address on the air, that's fine. Uh, if you wanna contact one of us after the, the meeting, we'll be happy to uh, take a look at your address location. Um, but ordinarily when, when flags are installed in people's front yards, it's, it's delineating the underground services that are in there to alert the contractors uh, or the utility agency that's coming behind the location of the underground utility on your property uh, from, the, from the street to the house itself. Ordinarily it would be gas or water, a sewer line or something like that. Uh, for this project, um, we'll be doing that for the sewer lines, um, ordinarily not the water lines, but again, until we know your exact location, um, we can identify whether it's part of this project or another project with another utility. Thank you, John. Are there any other questions at this time? Eric, I see no hands raised. Oh, wait, now we have one. One moment. Our next speaker is Joy's Galaxy. Joy, I have enabled your speaking permissions. Please uh, state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question. Hi, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, with the job uh, this big that you guys have done before, what are like maybe the top three issues that you guys have um, experienced with this kind of job that you guys done before in residential area? Thank you, Joy. Uh, Greg, can you field that question for Joy? Yes, thank you, Eric. I would say the top issues are, are noise, um, dust and, and traffic control impacts. Those, those tend to be the biggest issues that we have um, doing construction projects in a neighborhood. Um, this one in particular, because there is some night work and we know that will impact some residences a lot more than others. Um, it's also a major thoroughfare. So there's a lot of traffic, which is why we, we put together such a comprehensive traffic control plan to mitigate any traffic impacts that may may result. Um, does, it, uh, does that answer your question or? Uh, I'm sorry, can you hear me? There yeah. you go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, yes. Um, okay, this gives me a good, good idea. I just think also about um, my cats. We have a 
we have a good amount of cats on Lamina's Lane. Um, and just thinking that, you know, the animals might be a little scared with all the happenings in our street. Cool. It will be, it will be louder and you should expect that. And um, there's nothing we can do to mitigate that. It's, it's going to be loud and dusty. So we, we apologize and, and, and appreciate your patience during this as we get through it and provide these important water and sewer improvements to your neighborhood. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nathan O'Dell. Nathan, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question. Hi, this is Nathan O'Dell. I am located on Lomitas. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one, I wanted to touch on the overall schedule. Um, you say at the beginning of the presentation, February 22nd is beginning to install the water main on Lomitas. Um, once that is complete, what is, else will be installed along Lomitas? And is there a, a time frame for that in the future? And then what type of noise can we expect from the underground uh, tunneling or pipe installation? Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Tom, do you want to field that, that question? I will, yeah. Nathan, um, yes, correct. The, the first water of work on Lamedes will be the water line. Um, that will be followed after by the sewer line, the new sewer line that's going in there. Um, we're, we're working on the, the, the timelines for that too, and that will be in a future presentation. Um, but that will be the next phase of work. And then once that is completed, there will be a final phase at the very end, and that will be a whole uh, the surface restoration and striping of the Lomitas Lane uh, and Lomitas Avenue services, surfaces. Um, with, with regards to noise, uh, ordinarily for um, trench in, open trench, it would be saw cutting um, for the, the line lanes for the excavation that's going to get removed. The, the backhoe um, and excavators will be noisy. Um, the generally the compaction uh, test, uh, the compaction of the new backfill over the pipes in the trench again um, re requires um, a compacting machine uh, or, or a, a sheep's foot on an on a excavator. Um, again, that, that's a noise generating. And, uh, and then when we come to paving again, we kind of go from bottom to, to back to the surface again. And when it comes to paving, there'll be some maybe potential grind out. There's a grinding machine and then uh, the, the pavement operation is usually not as noisy, a little bit of dust, um, but uh, that's what we've got for the kind of the installation for the open trench. For the, uh, the, the pits and the boring, um, there'll be noise from the excavation of the vertical shafts, um, whether it's a drilling rig or an excavator itself. Um, down in the pit itself, then there's a boring machine or a ramming machine, there's the potential for uh, noise to come out there, but because it's it's down below subgrade in some instances, 20 feet, 20 or 30 feet, that could be uh, could be um, muffled, if you will, um, and not as as pronounced. So uh, this one is just kind of the typical um, operations that we have. We have uh, Sean on the line too from the contractor. And I'm happy to uh, Sean if he's got anything to elaborate on that, or if he's uh, any insight that's going to be useful for for the team. I think the only thing I would add is, you know, usually the most difficult part for people is the backup beepers, you know, yeah. and, and I just ask everybody to understand that by law, we have to have those on and working on all of our machines. And I know that noise will drive you crazy, but just please understand that at no point can I disconnect it or have a machine running without it or else we'll have serious issues with OSHA. So I think that's the only thing I would add. Thanks, Sean. Nathan, does that answer the question? Hi, uh, yeah, thank you. I, it was mainly the, the nighttime noise for, for the underground tunneling. Just wondering what kind of impact that was gonna have 
Um, I'm right on the corner of Lomitas and Sinead. So whatever yeah. noise is there, I'm going to get from both sides. Yeah, my understanding is that's not night sign work. All, all of the, the only night sign work is uh, going to be a tie-in at Mendocino and Sinead. And that's for a sewer line. And that's just open, that's open trench. And there'll be some trenching in the businesses, um, which is the extension of the Lomitas uh, lane. Uh, onto Mendocino Avenue. The the other work is uh, generally unless there's something that's going to be um, completely out of sequence or out of whack or the reason for nighttime work will all be during the day. So it'll be all daytime operation. Thank you. Hey. Our, our next speaker is Bill Dornbush, followed by Sonia Taylor. Bill, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question. Hi, this is Bill Dornbush. Uh, how and when will you provide us with future updates on the project? Thank you, Bill. Uh, I hope you're a, uh, you've uh, subscribed to our weekly email uh, uh, updates. If you haven't, you can do so by going to, to our website, uh, shenatesewerproject.com. Uh, we also have updates on the website itself. And in addition, at, as major phases of construction begin, we will have similar type meetings to these to update people as we go through the process. Um, Greg, do you have anything else to add? No, I just... Thank you, Eric. Um, and Bill, I just encourage you, like Eric said, to sign up for the website. As soon as we get the latest information or something changes, we do it on the website. And that's the best place to go. And a real convenient thing, if you don't happen to check the website and it gets updated, is to go ahead and sign up for those alerts. And that way you won't miss anything. OK. Our next speaker is Sonia. Sonia, I've enabled your speaking permissions. You may provide your question or comment. I'm back. A um, couple of questions about the work on Lamitas Lane, tentatively scheduled for the 22nd of February 3rd through the 17th of March. Number one, I presume we're still gonna be able to get in and out of our driveways, even though uh, we will, there, I'm also presuming there'll be no parking along the street. The second question is uh, temporary interruption to water of four hours or up to four hours and then ag additionally another hour. Are we going to have, um, I, I presume you're gonna let us know when this is gonna happen in advance. Um, and that's what I'd like to confirm. And then for the night work at the corner of Mendocino and Sinead, that's gonna overlap, it looks at least a little bit with the day work on Lamitas Lane, and if it becomes intolerable, I presume that you will talk to us about hotel rooms or something like that. Those are my questions at the moment. Additional ones, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Greg, do you want to uh, start with uh, some of the answers to those questions? Sure, thank you, Eric. Um, Sonia, you will be allowed access to your residence at all times. Um, so there'll be people there, staff to make sure to guide you through the construction zone if needed to get you to your residence. Um, there will be times where there is day and night work. And we realize that the noise will, there will be impacts to certain residences greater than others. Um, and as far as hotels and such, um, if anybody is having really adverse reactions and would, would like something like a hotel or, or, or another remedy, of, to please contact our hotline and we'll work with you individually to, to try to meet your needs. Um, you, you may have had another question. I'm trying to... Yeah, about the water interruption. Oh, yeah. Um, so with, with the water, it I don't believe it's going to be four hours. Um, I think your 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 interruptions will be more along the line of thirty minutes or so. You will be notified well in advance, and the field staff will 
will knock on residences doors to give you a heads up and they'll tell you as soon as they're done. So that way you know that you're not wondering if you're when or, 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 your, or you know, when your water is gonna get returned, your service. Thank you. We have another speaker, A-C-H-I-M-C-K at packbell.net. Packbell, I have enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question. This person is having a hard time unmuting. Okay, hi, my name is Joe Corte. I live on Strawberry Drive and uh, we had recently uh, a truck with a compressor and jackhammer. And I was wondering uh, if there are any jackhammers that are a little less noisy, like what this company has you know, like whisper jackhammer. I'm just asking a question, you know, if somebody can answer it, you know, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Tom, can you uh, take a shot at, at Joe's question? I can, yeah, there are uh, various uh, makes of the compressor, the whisper quiet, as you say, um, that is that is part of it and the other, Part of it is the actual impact with the, whether it's the points or the spade that gives off the noise too. Um, I, I don't know what Sean's inventory looks like, uh, but I will uh, circle back around uh, with Sean and see, unless he wants to um, um, add something to the conversation here um, to see if, if they do have something along those lines uh, in their inventory. Uh, I can go ahead and check for you and find out. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, you know, I know our equipment's relatively new, so um, I'd have to check with dispatch and see what we have. I, I and I guess the good news would be I think we're we should be done with strawberry. I think they're done potholing. So, you know, basically the next time we would come in there is when we're ready to do the sewer work, and and I'll make a note to uh, check with my crew and see if there is a wider compressor that they need. Great, Thank thanks, you. John. At the moment, I see no other hands. Do we have any other questions? Eric, I see no hands up. With no further questions, I'd like to express my appreciation and, and thank members of the public and all the panelists and hosts for participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and provide your input. I wanna remind everyone that we have a special web page for this project, www.shenatesewerproject.com, where you can find information on construction, progress, and status. If you would like information, more information on the project, I encourage you to subscribe to receive construction updates by logging on to www.shenatesewerproject.com and clicking the subscribe button. Thank you again and good night.